Yo, what it do, man? This is Grindface and the Therapist, man. I'm Demetrius. And I'm Sidian. We've been together for 28 years, married for like 23, 22, but who's counting? This is episode 12, and we're going to touch on overindulging, man. So, Sidian, start us off with people that overindulge. It's not about people that overindulge. I just had a thought that came to mind, um, and I was thinking about social media, Um You know, if a person looks at social media for long periods of time, I think anybody, there would be some type of effect. You know, even if you're basically working as yourself, because what made me think about it, I saw this article, I think it was like last year where this company was um, contracted with Facebook to basically um, go through all their content and the stuff that was like gruesome, violent, you know, things like that, that they were supposed to remove it. And they were saying by watching it all day, it was basically taking a mental toll on their mental health. And so I was thinking about social media, social media, um, and how people just watch. People say they don't watch TV, but in reality, social media is TV. Yeah, everybody got a channel. Not just the channel. What I'm saying is people, they pride themselves, oh, I don't watch TV, but how many hours do you spend on social media? You substituted TV for social media. And I think when people over engage in social media, it could be a negative thing. Just like if you over indulge in watching TV all day, or you over indulge in eating cake. I think if you over indulge in anything, it's unhealthy. It should be a balance because eventually if you're on social media constantly, you know, depending on what you're looking at, eventually I think it's going to take a mental toll. I think negative thoughts will creep in. I think comparison will creep in. I think your mind just will wander in different areas and directions well, that they, it typically doesn't go. Well, you saying overindulge. So what if you overindulge in positivity? Is, would that be a problem with too much positive shit? You know what I'm saying? Feeding, feeding yourself too much positivity? I don't think it's something wrong with too much positivity, but I think in everything there needs to be balance, right? If it's, if, If you're overindulging in too much positivity, I think you can lose sight of reality. Mm, Good point. Good point. Like, for example, like, don't get me wrong. I think I'm a very positive person. But let's say there's a real life situation and it's like, oh, positive, positive. I think you should be positive all the time. They call it positive patty. I don't think there's anything wrong with a positive patty. People used to call me that. What I'm saying is when it's overkill it could be to the point where it loses balance so let's say a serious situation no because that would be faith i'm trying to think about a situation where you know people will lose touch of reality like it's cool to be positive but i also think you should be grounded in reality too you know you should have faith it's 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 not just a negative thing it's also things that's good for you you can also overindulge and make it bad for you well, like, I think too much time in any, okay, let's say, for example, you could be watching positive stuff all day long, but that goes back to our old previous podcast is like, if you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to something. So even if you're, let's say you're watching hours and hours of it, it could become a negative because then where's the time for your family? Where's the time for, so you, in everything, I think there okay, always needs to be saying. a balance. I'm not saying just have positive thoughts. You should have positive thoughts all day. But let's say I'm listening to podcasts all day long. And I'm like, but they're positive. But it's like, okay, when are you going to shower? When are you going to get up and do something productive? Like, yeah, you're listening to it all day. But when are you going to take action and act on what you're listening to? And so, so it falls about what's taking all your time. Not if necessarily. You're it, it's like um, you going to the gym. You you on your workout tip because you want to be healthy. That would be considered a positive thing. But if you constantly working out, working out, working out, and at the gym you're you lacking in your relationship somewhere or yeah, I think it should be a balance. Things. I don't think you should overindulge in anything. I think it should always be a a, a healthy balance. Life is a healthy balance. Okay, that's a coin. Life life is a healthy balance. So you do need a little bit of um, negativity in there. No, 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 no. I did not say you need a little. I don't think you need (laughs) negativity at all. I'm just saying it made me think about it because of the line of work that you do. 
and they were trying to sue. I believe it was Facebook. The yeah, they wanted they didn't have no um, mental health for the um, employees, and they they needed to process what they see because it's, yeah. it's filtering how they see reality. So you think like, okay, they're just doing gruesome and like all this violent content, but let's take that out. You know, we're regular people. You see fatalities. You see murders. You see. Um, brutality by the police. You see fights. It, you it, see it, subbing. It you see negative curves comments. Curves how you think. Yeah. So I'm not going to say it curves how you think, but I think too much of anything, there should be a balance. I mean, for me, I don't really like taking that in at all, but I'm just saying it, it sparked the thought. As an employee mindset of a point, because this is their job. So it's like they kind of forced to see this stuff. So as an employer, you, they should have an option where they could release some of this stuff. Well, they, they need see. to. I think they need to give them. Um, it should be a balance. Like, okay, for example, we see clients all day, right? But then I have assemblies. Then they go to mental health fairs. I, I let them get out. So there's a, a. I try to have a balance. So they're just not session, session. You know, session, 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 back to back with heavy stuff. Because now they need to release. And then I give them two hours of downtime. You know what I mean? So there's a balance where we're just not taking all this in. And then for eight hours straight. And then. But do you think that's really the employer's responsibility? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. So if I hire you to unload this trailer, this truck, unload these boxes, this is what I hire you for. I don't need to switch up your job duty. This is what I hire you for. No, but. You know what I'm saying? No. I think I think as an employer, it's always your responsibility to make sure that you're doing your due diligence by your employees. So my thing is this. I always want to be the employer that I would want to work for. So if I was an employee, I asked myself, would I want to work for you? And so my biggest thing is, yes, I hired you for a job, but it is also my responsibility to make sure you're mentally sane. I'm in the mental health field. So for me to have their therapists, working with people and they're not mentally okay that's all the way backwards i always have to make sure my therapists are okay okay i mean i guess some employers don't feel like that because i doubt if amazon thinking like that but hey but but this is the thing amazon is a built their company to be a multi-billion dollar company great i have a lot of respect for the building of how he built his company but I never want to lose sight in the bottom line and forget about the people because the people are what makes your company, right? And I feel like when you invest in the people, they'll be willing to invest back and not even just to do it because you want them to invest back. I just think it's humanity. You know, um, you want people to feel okay. You want people to be all right. I, I don't want my employees, my staff just coming to work and not, liking what they do or not wanting to be there. Let me tell you something. When you have a a staff full of people that don't want to be there, because I know when I was at jobs and I didn't want to be there, my attitude was for sure I didn't want to be there. And it was because of leadership. And so I never want to get to the point to where I personally forget about the people that are helping me build. Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, nine times out of ten, most people don't want to be at work, period, point, point. It's work. I you know think it saying? depends on now, what you what you do because when okay for a example a lot of people is not doing what they would and that's then that would and that's the problem if you're doing something that you don't want to do I could say the difference when I was at jobs when it wasn't in my field and I had to do it for a paycheck I hated it but when I was actually working at the school or doing therapy and in my field I was like a kid in a candy store so hold on so you saying you was at a job doing it for the paycheck and you hated it correct so this is not the employer's problem. This well, is, no, this, it's, yeah, problem. that's a person. You need to get well, in a lane where you but enjoy this, your job. But this is the thing. I, 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 I wouldn't hire happy. someone unless they just lying and then you lying and that's on you. But I always tell people, you shouldn't just go into an interview and with the mindset of I'm, I'm being interviewed, but you should also be interviewing the employer. It should go both ways because they should be seeing if you're an asset for their company, but you should also be seeing if what they're giving aligns with what I want to do. And is it an asset to me? So it should go both ways. So it should be fair exchange, no robbery. So if you're in a position and you don't want to be there, then that's on you. Cause I only want to hire people that truly enjoy doing what we do. 
I mean, that's a good concept, but it's kind of hard too. To I mean, people are gonna mm, lie. Yeah. I've I've had it happen. I mean, you. I and, mean, and I lied on many applications. Like shit, get my foot in the door and just. Have I ever? I've never lied on an application on uh, on an application. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Shout out to them jobs that hired me though. But I will say this, but I always gave 100%. But we're deviating from what we were supposed to be talking about, which I guess we can talk about whatever we want to talk about, but just overindulging. So I was just thinking about that, and I was thinking about you. And I'm like, you know, you're on social media a lot because this is what you have to do. You know, the funny thing that I'm on social media, and you you tell me this all the time because, well, um, do you – well, what happened? I'll be like, shit, I don't know. It's whatever the caption it, Because I really don't really don't. watch the whole video. And I, I skim through it, like, make sure it don't violate stuff. I really don't this invest in really it. This dude really does not look like, at his content. I don't know. Shit. Because I will watch a video and, and I'll be laughing or what. And I'll be like, did you see this, this, this? He'll be like, actually, I didn't. I'm like, how did you post it? And you didn't really. Because when you go through so much stuff, you learn how to. Filter through stuff, and th- and that's what I master of uh, filtering. I don't have to watch the whole video. I don't. I don't listen to the things that's being said. And I think that's why I get violated and um, banned so much because I don't be listening to everything. No, you don't. You know what I'm saying? I just I see the numbers. It's doing good. I know this is good. And I post it. I don't invest into into it. I don't research it. I don't look into the story of what happened. Is these people still? You know what I'm saying? I just po- post and move on. And some people, they invest. They see something. They want to Google it, read the articles about it and, and everything else. And now they invested in that story, and now it's taking a toll on them. And I think that's where you I call overindulging and stuff. I don't because think. Because you, you, you digging into it uh, like you a detective and shit. You I don't dig saying? in. Well, I'm going to be honest. I could watch a movie. And I want to know, you know, how are the characters doing? Exactly. No, no, See, no. You, when you, it's you be real watching life. a movie and be like, hey, that's the actor that played in Whoopi Whoop. I'll be like, look, I, do. I don't care. This is the movie I'm watching. <laughs> this is what I don't care what they play in. I'm watching the movie but of this I movie. But I do do research in the sense of not to, I'm, wait, let's, let's be specific. So not to know people's business. But one thing I'm big on that's an inspiration to me, I love watching movies. It's based on a true story. So I will research, like, is this true? What part of the story is true? What's not true? Um, because that that is what inspires me, to see people's life from the bottom to the top. It's like... Well, documentaries, I understand. But I love half of stuff that, like it's that. It's entertainment. I'm just, I'm watching for what I'm seeing right there for entertainment. But see, I'm purpose, not necessarily you know watching it for entertainment. I'm watching it to well, basically... Well, we're talking about documentaries. We, well, with movies... It's, it's, you watch well, it if it's not a movie, like, if it's not a movie that's based on a true story, there's no reason for me to research anything. True. So even with that, even on social media, I'm watching for entertainment. Most people, you know what I mean, you got some that's going to research and want to figure out the truth. I'm like, gonna be I care honest. Less. I'm gonna be honest. You know what I'm saying? Social like, media for me is like people with a cigarette. I'm, I ask people like, I, why do you smoke? And most most people that I ask that question, they said it's like a habit or it's boredom. So honestly, if I'm like doing something, you don't think about it. I don't even go on my phone and go on social media. But if I'm just sitting at home and I'll see myself like go get on, get off because I'm not doing anything. And I can't say that's for everyone, but I know like when I'm having a busy day and that's probably three to four times out of the week, um, People say, did you see it? I have no clue of what you're talking about because I don't really like to get attached to social media like that. But let's 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 switch it up to food, though, because I hear you can like, overindulge in food, too. People. But the, the thing is, people eat just to I guess it feels good to them. You know what I'm saying? Some people feel good. That's gluttony. That's a total. It's still uh, overindulging. That's just you know being greedy. No, because some people can't help it. It's like. It, it gives them peace, some type I of I think they peace. do it like the cigarette. It's out of yes, boredom. Yes, So even with, with the cigarette to the food, to the exercising, to a lot of things, I think it revolves back to something mental. You know what I'm saying? I think it's bo- boredom. I think we have, we have like a, a microwave mentality. We want gratification. We want it at our fingertips, and we want it now. Because all you have to do is go for a walk. Read a book. I love to read books too, mainly when it's about either knowledge or somebody's but life. What, what makes walks and reading the books a better activity than eating and smoking a cigarette? Okay, because you're feeding. No, I'm not saying just let's read a love novel. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying let's put something in you that's going to benefit. Because if you're saying they're eating a lot, hey, walking is healthy. 
But what reading I'm, knowledge is healthy. Who says it's a benefit for them? I mean, it's. You I'm know not what I'm saying? saying that specifically. That's, that's I'm not saying they have to do that. I'm saying, I'm saying what's saying. beneficial, what's healthy. It could be. It could be something completely different. It could be. Hey, they want to get into a pottery class. It could be. I'm saying. That was just think, two examples. I think it's more of you need to find out what's triggering this problem. As, boredom. Okay, you say boredom, but what? Why? Why? What's causing you to be bored so fast? You know, what because I'm we are in an instant gratification generation. To where? I mean, think about it. Just let's just think about it. When we were kids, right? You being in the house was like a punishment. You went outside, you rode your bike, you 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 put on your skates, you may have two two hand touch football, baseball. Like you went outside and you have fun. So you really didn't have a lot of downtime, right? And so the kids today, they really don't go outside and let's even think about the adults. Um But what's up, but that's what I'm saying. You can't relate what's your childhood with these childhoods because it's a different generation. So they're, but that's their what I'm fun saying. We're in a different the phone. It, their their phone is social media. Their fun is different than us roller skating outside because it's a different generation. So as us being the older generation, we don't understand their fun. I understand their fun. I just think their fun is watching other people have fun. Yeah, I, so I see them so watching kids. They're play watching the game kids on, on YouTube. YouTube they're the watching somebody else. So they're watching people have fun instead of having fun. And even adults, even us. You watch people, people live in life. On, yeah, you're watching people live life instead of living life. What do I always say? I get so irritated when I'm out and people want to take pictures of millions. Like, I'm in the moment. I want to enjoy the moment. Yes, you should have pictures. And I hate when every time we take pictures, people want to put them on social media. Like, yeah, let's take pictures for keepsake. Let's take them for memories to look back on. But I don't want to spend, I'm at some place well, let's fun. let's be realistic. Ain't nobody looking back at no photo album. The photo album is social media. But I don't, listen, if I'm somewhere and you know I'm big on this, I'm having fun. I'm not even thinking about my phone because I'm in the moment I'm living. And that's what I'm saying. We are in a generation where people want to watch other people live. And this is where the problem comes in overindulging, watching other people live. Now they expect their life should be like this, or they want their life to be like this. So now they're envious. They're upset. Depressed. Uh, yeah. Depressed because this person got a new car and they're still in the no, it's a rental. Yeah. And so <laughs> I think when you overindulge in things like that, you're setting yourself up for failure because it's no benefit. Why do you want to sit and watch somebody's life all day? It's, I, it's entertaining. But at some point, don't you want to get up and, and enjoy life? Their life is boring. That's why they on social media. Yeah. yeah, that's that's I mean bottom line. So it goes back to what I was saying, yeah, boredom. boredom. I guess, yeah, cuz if you if you feel like your life is exciting, you will be outliving it, I guess. And document it. Well, I think as an document adult, every process. day is not going to be fun. Well, if you're a responsible adult, every day is not going to be fun and filled with I mean, it's not. But at least try to be productive. You know what I mean? If you watching somebody's life in a, all day long, you're not productive. You you can't be. You just can't. Uh, I agree. Uh, um, yeah, because you 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 you. I guess I always say either you the um consumer, consumer or, or you the, the cr creator or whatever the other one is. I got it. Creator. I can't. You know what I'm saying? So you either you gonna, you're creating or you, you're consuming. Yeah. So it, it's it's which one? Either or. You can't be both. You know, so um, that's overindulging in social media. Um, you go overindulge in the gym. You go overindulge on food. I think you even indulge in relationships. Well, how you, how would you overindulge? Because when you just spend all your time with this person, and you don't have time for self, you don't have time for other things. I think that's overindulging, where it could become codependent. Mm. It's unhealthy. So spending too much time with your spouse is unhealthy. So I didn't you, say spending so too much spend, time. I think you should spend time. I'm saying when all your time overindulging just with this one, like every time I get a break, I got it every, like, it's kind of like, okay, love. what's wrong with love? No, is there isn't anything wrong with being in love. Right. But I also believe you need time for self. 
That, need, but if you calling somebody you, time you love, that is time for you. That's time for yourself. It's feeding you because this is what okay. you want. You're okay. love. This is what I tell you girls, young women, and girls all the time. Right. So this is I always tell my daughter this: don't get a boyfriend and basically stop talking to your friends and everything becomes about this boy, because when you break up and you neglected those relationships and. They're no longer there. And so I don't care how in love you are. I still think you need an identity outside of that relationship. Balance your relationship. Yeah, that's okay. unhealthy. It's codependent. It's overindulging in a relationship. Your whole life should not be about another person. That's codependency. You should have other goals like, okay, we're married. We have marriage goals and we also have family goals. And then we also have individual goals, right? Right. My every day and time is not with you. Yeah, I said it right. like that. <laughs> right. She, her every day time. That's why she be running out this house so fast. Whatever. It's I, all right. It is all right. No, I just really believe that though. Everything should have a balance, you know. And I always tell my daughters like, hey, if you dating, just do not make your center focus about this guy. You know, you still need to nurture and water your other relationships. Facts. So um, don't overindulge in that guy, that woman, because they might not be there the next day. You but it's not saying? even really about not being there. That's just an example I use with them because they're so young. But what I'm saying is the person could be there forever. Like, you know what I'm saying? People probably didn't think we would be together as long as we are. But I still think it's unhealthy, even if you're together for a lifetime, that you're every, you know, you're overindulging with this person. Again, it's codependent and it's unhealthy. You should always, everything should have a balance. Everything should have a balance. So we should have named the show Balance instead of Overindulging. Yeah, I just think a healthy life is a balanced life. But when you say balance, balance equals a negative and a positive that will balance things out. You know what I'm saying? I so don't I'm, necessarily think a balance is a negative and positive, a positive, but we'll go to the definition because you know I'm big on because it, it, you, words you and need, definitions. It's a little drama, a little chaos here and I there. I don't need that, a little drama. To balance your life out, you know what I'm I saying? I don't need a little drama. I do not. Because everybody don't live in Pleasantville. I don't know. <laughs> so not too much drama. Not too much chaos. You got to balance it out. Because it's, it's, it's the other side, too. People like the bullshit. A lot of people in there like the drama. So you can't overindulge in all that bullshit. Y'all got to balance it out. It doesn't say negative and positive. It's giving multiple I mean, that's examples. just a natural thing of balance. You got to have a negative and a positive. It's just, it's not even giving a good definition of balance. But, okay. But it's not a, definitely not a negative and positive. And... Why? You like a little drama in your life? No. I mean, sometimes a little drama spikes up some shit. No, not for me. Um, no, yeah. I used to like the drama back in my young 20s. But you now in your you know 40, yeah. your, young, your young 40s. We just so, decided to go out, bullshit pop off and everything like that. That's And that ain't never been my mindset, ever. Yeah, like, I've that. always been, if trouble come to me, you started, I'm going to finish it for sure. However, like, I've never no, I wasn't just liked to start, drama. I never started drama. I'm just saying, you know. It makes shit more exciting. I more. guess the reason why, too, because I know stuff get real. And then I know how I was. And, you know, I'm not the biggest and baddest. I know how other people are, too. Like, so for me, like, if it's avoidable, let's avoid it. I mean, if you started, I'm definitely going to finish it. I'm not running from anything. But at the same time, my mindset was I understand how things get and it could get real, real in the streets. So for me, even with drama, I remember... Like a few years ago, I, I was being a good cousin and, and kind of told a cousin something that was going on. And I was doing a good deed. <laughs> and it turned into this whole big fiasco to where I was like, I shouldn't even try to help her. You know what I mean? And so for me, it's like, I really don't like the stress of drama or negativity. Like, it's no. it's too draining for me. It's, and, and that's the key word right there, draining. Yeah, negativity yeah. It, and it drama drain. is draining. It like, drain. I can't. Like, even when I had um, f some friends that were just it, always drama in their relationship and all, like, it, it becomes draining, you know what I mean? And so some people may get a kick out of that. For me, it's like, I I don't want that in my life. So I was telling Demetrius the other day, I remember we were talking, we were saying um, 
I was like, dang, we should do, or I ain't going to give you all my ideas, but I was talking about a reality show. And then he was like, but they want drama. And I was like, yeah, that's, then, yeah, they're, they're, I, I'm probably not going to make it. Because my life would, to some people would be boring because there is no drama. But I like that. I like the fact that can't nobody call me and such and such said, you said it is like, yeah, that, that ain't the life for me. Now, once you get a taste of peace, you get it. And you, I wonder, is it overindulging in peace? I don't think you can overindulge in peace. I don't know. Because once you get that taste of peace, that's what you want. You don't want that bullshit around. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I like to be in a peaceful environment. You ain't got to worry. Because when you're in a, a, a tension spot in the situation, you could feel that energy. I don't know if some of y'all ever felt that energy, but you could feel that energy. That's what I'm saying. When you walk in a room pop off some, and this you know person got an yeah. issue with this person, it's you like, could, should I invite this person? Yeah, they, like, like, all that. that's annoying to me. And it's like, okay, they having issues. This person think they want. And then yeah. it's everybody at your, like, and you can, you just can don't sense come. that energy in, in their environment. You know what I'm saying? Anything could pop off. And it's like, those environments is not, it's not peaceful. You, it you makes wanna, it yeah. not fun. So exactly. when you talk about, a little bit of drama, which you're being hypocritical because you made it seem like you want drama. No, I was just saying for if you're you playing know, devil's some, advocate. Some people out there like the drama. Some people live off the drama. Some people but you don't understand indulge in the drama. But, but when that, but when that drama really, when it gets real, when it get real, real, because everybody just thinks, oh, it's drama is fun until somebody get killed. So because you don't know how far somebody go, it's all no, fun in yeah. games until it get real. And I think from the time I was a kid, I understood like this could get real. You know what I mean? It's just not going to stay here. And then coming from where I come from, I always knew like, nah, the, the <laughs> Claremont. Okay. Really? <laughs> like I said, said ask about the CVs, Claremont. the Claremont village. Claremont. Department. So, okay. <laughs> So, but you know, oh, it could really get real, like real quick. And so drama for me is like, it's, it's never been a, no. Like I said, if you started it, I would finish it. But I'm definitely not just, oh yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, I love the drama. Well, yeah, I'm not no. saying you love it. It's, it's people that love the drama. And that's what I'm saying. It's, you can also overindulge in, in the BS. And but it's be unhealthy. Like, exactly. Because what is the, what is, what is the, the aftermath v- of the drama? You know what I'm saying? I get your ass whooped. Not even that. <laughs> not, not even that. Just not having the, okay, somebody calling your house. Let's say just the typical caddy, a rumor. Such and such said, you said, and that person said, now you, this person, like, who wants to deal with that every day? That's some people don't, but some people that's 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 their their life. They like it, but it's still over and indulging, yeah, and it's indul- unhealthy. Balance, you got balance. They probably go to church on Sunday, and then they get to church. <laughs> and Deacon such and such said, "You said," and that's it. Like, uh, yeah, I, I ain't got oh, time. Oh goodness, yeah. So then you got to um, stop overindulging in all the activities. I think just. Stop overindulging, period, and find balance. You know, find balance in life. Okay, it's but cool how to be on one, social media. How will one balance, balance, like, you know what I'm saying? If you, this is like, because you're saying they overindulge in this and that, but apparently it, it's, it's feeding something and they like it. You know what I'm saying? Of course, of course. So People how, do stuff how, that they it, like. It's like a, a but just a because druggy, I like it, just because drugs, I like it doesn't not, mean it's, it's healthy. It's not easy though. It's not easy to stop if you enjoy this. It's like a junkie, you know what I'm saying, taking hits. But it's this like, is okay, until that junkie almost OD or that junkie lose everything they have. I mean, you got to hit rock bottom and if you hit rock bottom and you still don't get it because everything has a consequence. Well, not everything has a consequence, but I'm saying when you live over and indulging it, it's going to be a reaction to that. So, I mean, the thing is, yeah, do you like it this much um, more than your life? Because it's going to infect and impair your life at some point. So if I the, eat too much cake, I'm gonna get, okay. I'm gonna become overweight. So let's let's take it, put the responsibility on the spouse. Let's say we got a married couple. Do you gonna put the responsibility on the spouse? Oh, yeah, because let's say let's say you have a married couple and okay. one 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 of them overindulge in sex. They always got to have sex. Mm-hmm. So it's the other couple's job to please this person because if they don't balance, they gonna move out and go get it somewhere else. So now it's like the blame no. on the other spouse, like that's balance. They got it's addiction, balance. It's but they ba- can't. They can't solve the addiction. So it's like 
what does, what should that person do? You need to go get help. You need to go see a sex therapist. You need to go to have, you know, obviously you, you are addicted to sex because even in that, that's overindulging. Cause what you're saying is you're basically using your, your, your spouse as a stress reliever. Your spouse should not be a stress reliever. You know what I mean? You're basically putting pressure on your spouse to say, Hey, I have to basically be up here all the time or it's a problem. So the, the spouse that doesn't want to have sex all the time has to say, okay, my spouse's libido is high. I have to up it up. But then the other spouse has to say, it's too high. I have to bring it down. Balance. Compromise. So some, they got to come to a mutual agreement. Balance. Okay. Is your libido super high? Because <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> you just got super quiet. Oh my goodness! No, I'm just saying. I was just thinking of the next, um, a next um, situation that people could have out there. That you know, what I'm saying, because it's like you try to put your problem on the, to the other person and making them responsible of your problem. And, I don't think know? a person should ever be responsible for your problems. I think it's an inner issue. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't make you responsible for my problems but I do love and I am excited when you help me solve them but what's going on with me and internally that's not something you could fix that's something I have to fix and so where should they get it fixed at like you said therapist huh? I guess spiritual faith therapy something but at some point I think in life you have to get tired of your situation and, and that's the reality of it until you're tired you're not going to change it you know what I mean? You have to be tired of going through this. You have to be tired of sitting on social media wishing your life would be like. You have to be tired of saying, I want to lose the weight. You have to be tired of saying, I want a better marriage. You got to be some tired point, of saying you want sex all the time. Yeah, at some... <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. I ain't going to say you got to be tired of having sex all the time. You probably will be tired of arguing with your mate or the disconnect that's coming from you wanting sex all the time with your mate. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not you wanting sex all the time. That's the problem. It's the aftermath of you doing that is what becomes a problem. So when you're tired of those situations that you've created for yourself, that is only when, and then you will make the change. But again, it goes back to you. Are you tired? Just like how when a person says somebody keeps getting cheated on over and over and over and over. I always tell people when they like, oh, he, this person cheating. I'll be like, when you get tired, you don't know. Because there's no point in having a conversation with you. It's not until yeah, you truly people, get wanna, tired yeah, they just and fed up. Yeah, you're going to talk about it a million times over. And I always say, are you tired? And I'll be like, why she always asks me that? Because you're, you're not going to change it until you're tired of it. I could be tired watching all day long, yeah, but, it's, a on that one. but it's not until you get tired and want to change it is when it's really going to change. <laughs> Ugh, I hate that. Don't do that again. That's and it's so loud. So when you get tired, you will make the change. Right. So it's not someone else's responsibility to assist you with the change. Are you, t it's kind of like somebody that they overindulge in kicking it all day. No productivity. Said overindulge and you it. know, we know people that they overindulge in kicking it all day. They oh, do absolutely goodness. nothing all day long. So the question is, are you gonna get when are you gonna get tired of being broke? Yeah. You know what I mean? When are you gonna get tired of Man up. yeah, being in this lifestyle? So it's not until you get tired of your situation is when you truly will change your situation. No, I, I, I could agree with that one because if once you get tired and fed up. You're going to make changes, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it's all it's all about you and your choices. So if you you making these bad choices, if you decide to kick it all day and don't have no money in your pocket, you can't be mad at nobody but yourself. I don't think sometimes that, well, sometimes they are mad at people. But what I'm saying is I don't think you should basically be looking at other people for your resource when you're not basically making it a point to be your own resource. At what point do you get tired of, not having money because you're kicking it all day. Mm. That's overindulging and kicking it. And I'm telling that's why I say when you overindulge, there has to be some type of balance because there's going to be an effect at some point. If you overindulge, I can't just be like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna just sit here and watch TV all day, every day, all day. Something's going to go lacking at some point. 
Yeah, I mean, you put it like that. You can really see it like that. If you really overindulge in something, it's something bad. I want to say bad. It's a negative side to it. It's a negative something going to happen. It's a consequence to it. You can't overindulge in anything. There always has to be a balance. So the key thing from this episode, man, is balance. You got to balance this shit out. Balance life out. It's, it's difficult, but it's possible. Put it like this. Let's say if I'm on my knees all day. Now, I could talk to God. I talk to God all day. Oh. It's my homeboy. It's my father. So if I'm on my knees all day long, right, and I'm just praying, praying, you praying. Just, just say you're, you're just praying. You don't got to say you're on your knees. You just say you're praying. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> PG, okay? I'm on my knees praying all day, right? At some point, God is going to tell me to get up and go take action. Faith without works is dead. So God will even tell you to take action. So if you're just, because some of you are like, oh, but I got to do God all day. Yeah, but if you're just sitting in one spot talking to God all day, I think God himself will even be like, hey, get up. Now go, go do what we talked about. Go put action in motion. I can't bless what you don't create. Mm-hmm. So, because I know somebody spiritual, like, but yeah, but that don't make sense because you can't overindulge in God. Yeah, I think God at some point would tell you to get up and go and go act. The hand gestures. I mean, people can't see you pointing this shit. Like, she over here pointing this shit. Like, I don't think the people could see you pointing where the direction, what direction? Point, which way to go again? Point. Like, shit, they can't see you. Oh my goodness, she's so funny because she's really out here giving a show. Y'all just can't see I it. I talk with my hands. She I'm really sorry. pointed the direction you should get up and go, y'all. Whatever. Too bad y'all don't know. So y'all gonna have to figure that one out on yourself. <laughs> Basically, because I know it's somebody go that's gonna be listening and say, that doesn't make because you know you always got someone that wanna be play devil's advocate. Uh, ain't no playing devil's advocate. I always got dumb people on my page. I don't, well, listen, I don't think no question is a stupid question. I do. I don't. Because at the end of the day, you're you're asking for clarity. But I only think it's a stupid no, question. It, it, listen, I listen. I only think it's a stupid question is when you ask the question when in reality you don't want to hear the information behind the question. So it's like you're asking a question, a challenge, but you really don't want to hear what the person has to say because you already feel like you know the answer. That's a stupid question. But if I ask a question, you just and said I, there's no such thing as a stupid question, though. No. That is, if I ask a question, but you just said it wasn't no such thing. Be quiet. Thing. If I ask a question and I really don't know the answer, I don't believe that's a stupid question because I'm really seeking clarity. It's only stupid when you ask, not seeking any clarity. Because what are you asking for? Okay. And my point is, if you're stupid and you ask any question, it's stupid. Bottom line. Well, that's what we'll agree to disagree. <laughs> no, I hate. But first of all, if you're not paying attention and listening, and then like say if I say, "Will you get to the corner, make a left," and you you ask me, um, that's which, not a stupid which question, way, which way to go?" That's a stupid ass question. No, you, it's you not. You should have been listening because like, they're seeking clarity because they didn't hear you. Now, if they heard you, because people this is now this is stupid. When I hate when people do this. Like, huh? What? Like <laughs> you just heard, and, and and they know they heard what you said. And, and I think, I don't know if they, people a, do that to get a pause or to get some time to, to think about what they're going to say. A, but it's, it's like, why are you saying what? When you could clearly repeat back to me what I just asked you. No, but if I'm doing something, because I do it all the time. If I'm multitasking, I'm probably not listening to you. And I might say, what'd you say? That's not a stupid question. I'm seeking clarity. I really didn't hear the directions. But if I ask a question... Not wanting to hear the answer, that's a stupid question because what are you asking me for? Because you really don't want to hear the information. See, y'all, I say it's no such thing as a stupid question. Let's move on to over. Hypocritical. You just basically went back on everything. I mean, just in case somebody take a clip out of this and use this clip, they could say. People going to use the clip they want to clip. Exactly. So I'm going to give them both answers. You know what I'm saying? So they could could have options. That's annoying too. Some people overindulge in trying to go back and look at people's. You know, I'm glad I deleted everything off my Facebook. Not to say it was bad. You ain't going to go back and get no history. But it's like you will go back overindulging and looking at someone's tweets. You got to have a lot of time on your hands. To bring up a ten year old tweet to somebody yeah, to say it that is. like that's crazy. You're over you're overindulging. You're overindulging in someone else's business in social media. 
Yes. You're not getting paid for that. Especially if they had tweet on uh, tweet Twitter. You know what I'm saying? That, that's like thousands of posts. Like, God, but, damn. but this is the thing. Who cares that much? Unless you run in a campaign or something and you trying to find dirt on your component. I just, I mean, your opponent, I just don't see, which I, I probably still wouldn't, but that's me. But you know, people are different. Hey, but I just don't see digging in somebody's social media 10 years back, five years back. You overindulging. You're overindulging in someone else's business. Well, I think we overindulging in this episode. <laughs> 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 I was thinking that we out. Oh shit! So y'all, y'all can find us. Uh, you can find me at I am Grindface on everything. Everything for me. Everything, Cynthia Mayo. Okay, excellent. Why we gotta go over this every time? Oh, this the show. I'm sorry. As I always say, as we always say, continue to break cycles. <laughs>